O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. I love that gospel where Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem to be about his final work. And he calls Herod that old fox. I used to think a fox was something or crafty and wily, and that's how foxes are often portrayed, but the more I read it, the more I think the fox is just simply a varmint that lives underneath the barn <laughs> and tries to get your chickens. And Jesus, as he is about this great work, says that Herod is like a fox and he is like a mother hen who would like to gather up those little chicks underneath her wing and care for them. And he's very clear and very plain that he is going to go into town to be and experience what the other prophets experience, which is death. Now, I'm going to read something that I read in the first service in a little bit, and it's uh, something that C.S. Lewis wrote about a particular kind of death. And how many of us are anxious about our own death? Okay, thankfully we got one honest soul here this morning. <laughs> we didn't have any in the 8 o'clock, so good <laughs> on you. All right. But let's talk about being anxious first. Now, who's anxious about something? I know folks in here are anxious. Folks are obsessed about things. People are afraid. Let's talk about Abram, the father of our faith. What was he afraid of? He was terribly afraid that he was going to die and not have an heir. And somebody else would get his estate. He was afraid that the promises of God that God had given him would not come true. So God took Abram out on a dark, beautiful night back before there was light as we know it and said, look up at the, look up at the sky. And he said, your descendants will be more numerous than the stars, even if you can count them, which you can't. But you're going to have more than that. Abram was still a little afraid, but where are they going to live, right? If you got, if you got progeny, you've got to have a place to, 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 to habitate. And he said, I'm going to give you this vast expanse, and it's described there in Genesis. And then there's these offerings, and there's this covenant where I like to think of it as God cut a deal that God is always going to keep. And that's the covenant he made with the father of our faith, Abram. Well, you know, just standing out there as some of you were coming in, and it was the same at the 8 o'clock, you know, people are very concerned about what's going on in the world. And um, if we're not concerned about what's going on in the greater world, we're always very concerned about what's going on in our world, right? Well... <coughs> these things need not dominate our minds. And I'll get to that. How many of you have ever heard of C.S. Lewis? Okay, good. We've got some good Anglicans here. Do you know what uh, C.S. It's, uh, Charles, uh, it's Clive Staples. Do you know what his friends called him? Anybody here? He went by Jack. He didn't go by C.S. or Clive. He went by Jack. If you didn't know it, Jack was an army officer in World War I and saw combat in Europe. Um, he lived through the 20s and the 30s, and he lived through uh, the bombing of London, the battle over Britain. Uh, he had quite a wealth of experience underneath his belt, quite a number of hardships, and he grew to be a great man of faith. And in 1948, he wrote to people who I assume were mostly folks in and around London, to the English people, who were absolutely terrified of the atomic bomb. You know, having been bombed for, I don't know, 
many, many years, and they were afraid of a particular bomb. And uh, in a really great way, Jack says this, why do you think so much about this atomic bomb? He said, it wasn't too long ago that us, I guess these English people in the 16th century, what came around every single year? The plague. <laughs> So, you know, long before the bomb came along, the, the plague came along and wiped a, a bunch of us out. And then he said, and not only the plague, he said, you know, it wasn't too long ago that we would sleep at night and some uh, Vikings from Scandinavia would come and slit our throats <laughs> while we slept. It's a pretty good sermon, isn't it? <laughs> And then he goes on, he talks about cancer and all kinds of things that we can't talk about in church and paralysis and air raids and railway accidents and auto accidents. And he says, do not let us begin by exaggerating the novelty of our situation. And he goes on to say, basically, everyone that is born is going to die. And then he goes on to say, and this is really, really, really wonderful, and some of us are going to die in some very unpleasant ways. And then he goes on to say, but thankfully we have, where is it here? Anesthetics? <laughs> Pain medicine. So he says the first point is, is one, we're all going to die. With or without the bomb, with or without whatever your greatest anxiety or fear is. And he says, when we do find ourselves about to die, he says, hopefully, let it be that it finds us doing sensible and human things. Let us be praying. Let us be found working. Let us be found teaching. Let us be found reading. And then he goes on to say, let us be found listening to music bathing children, playing tennis, chatting with our friends over a pint. I don't even know what that means. Do you know what that means? <laughs> and a game of darts, not huddled together, afraid. And he goes on to say, basically, it is our business as Christian people to live by our law, and our law is the law of Christ. In private life, and I'm going to talk about private life because I want to talk about the psalm a little bit, and in public life, the law of love and the law of temperance, and by that he meant moderation because he'd already told us it was okay to drink at the pub. And then he goes on to say that it is the kind of people who put heaven, and by that he meant God first, are the ones who are most beneficial to the world. So if you want to be of some earthly good, you need to be heavenly focused, not as a place of escape or destination, but meaning you have a vibrant, meaningful, rich interaction with that God that made those promises to Abram a long time ago. <coughs> because if you have that, then you have something that will carry you. And, you know, I told you I wasn't going to tell any Texas stories next time I came here, didn't I? This isn't a story, but it's a saying. Come hell or high water. We have a deep, lasting, eternal, sweet, fellowship with our creator whether we live or whether we die are you folks still with me it's kind of peppy this morning isn't it <laughs> so what i want to to close with is one if if you remember the psalm which you guys sang so beautifully the lord is our light the lord only is our salvation the lord only is our strength Knowing the Lord and living in and through and with the Lord, we have nothing to fear. No matter who or what surrounds us, though we be encamped or held siege, the war should ride up. We shall put our trust in Him. 
And it's because God speaks to each and every one of us and God has invited us to welcome him into our hearts and he's called us to seek his face. And I pray that each and every one of you during this holy Lent will do just that. Seek the face of the living God. Be found here in this temple because one day we will go to another place to be in his very presence. And that's what we're doing right now is we're practicing. When we come to this altar, we come to the throne of God. So here's your homework. Stand firm in the Lord. That's what Paul told those early Christians. Let us be about some good and sensible things. You know, when I come here, folks ask me, what should we be doing here at St. Anthony's? Well, how about some good and sensible things? Let this dominate our minds to live by the law of Jesus Christ. To live by that law of love and to let fear have its way somewhere else. And remember what Jack said, C.S. Lewis, those who want heaven most have served earth best. Those who love humanity less than God do most for humankind. Amen. Amen.